For as long as I have enjoyed watching movies, I have felt the magic of the big screen pull me in and manipulate my emotions in a wide array of ways. Cry, laugh, feel my heart beat out of my chest as I lean closer to the edge of my seat. I'm sure you've done the very same. Movies have the immense power to manipulate and change our emotions. When watching sad scenes, there are both the chemical and physical changes that the movie takes a hold of. The physical part comes from a movie-making rule called the mirror rule. Professor Jeffrey Zack states that when watching a movie, we tend to mirror the emotions of the person on screen. Take Malin's acceptance in Steel Magnolias, or John Coffey's execution in The Green Mile. It's George after killing Lenny in Of Mice and Men. We see the emotion on their face, their struggle, their pain, their fear, and we tend to copy that emotion as a social response. But there's other sad scenes that are created using music and camera direction. Carl's isolation after Ellie's death and up. It's everything about the movie Beast of the Southern Wild. From the music to Hush Puppy standing face to face with the metaphorical beast that's been running closer and closer all throughout the movie. These scenes make us feel something and they affect us on the chemical level. When a scene makes us cry, more of the proteins prolactin, luangfalin, and adrenocorticotrophic are produced while making the tears and the elements potassium and manganese are also found when you're crying. And there's a release of the chemical serotonin, which causes the empty feeling you sometimes feel when watching a particularly sad scene. Now let's get out of that slump and look as to why movies make us laugh. Most comedic outcomes are from the unexpected, like the vampire flat meeting and what we do in the shadows. Actually, it's all of what we do in the shadows. It's Tis a Scratch and the ending arrest in Monty Python the Holy Grail. It's the printer beat up in Office Space. We laugh because the opposite of our predicted outcome happened. We also laugh because it's the production of endorphins and dopamine in our brain. And then there's a release of that into our blood. The dopamine derives from tyrosine, which is formed by decarboxylation and dihydroxyphenylenin. These small molecules release joy. They make us smile and laugh. Then that brings us to our final common movie emotion, fear and thrill. Now there's the cheap tactic of creating fear, which is doing a jump scare, something that our brain perceives as unexpected or a dangerous threat, sending adrenaline to pump through our veins. Adrenaline makes us heartbeat faster, dilates the bronchi and cerebral vessels, and causes alertness, keeping us on edge for the next scene to come. Then there's the buildup of a scene which causes fear and thrill. Let's look at the movie Room at Jack's escape. Let me tell you, I've never been more afraid watching a movie than watching Jack's escape. Watching the trailer of the movie, you know Ma and Jack escape room because the movie is about the adjustments of life outside of room, but the movie creates a tension of fear and danger. We want nothing more than for Jack to get away from old Nick. Adrenaline begins to pump through the body, causing the previously mentioned outcomes, but another chemical begins to form. Norepinephrine. Norepinephrine creates the fight or flight response in humans. When watching the scene, the only thing you want is for Jack to get away from the kidnapper and to get to safety because the tension in the scene, the adrenaline and norepinephrine that is produced. So there we have it. Movies have the power to hold our emotions and they do that all through the small molecular level. Just to think that a combination of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen is responsible for every emotion we have ever felt. Each one of these molecules make us laugh, cry, or jump out in fright. If it weren't for the chemistry of these molecules, there'd be no movie magic that'd keep us going back again and again.